Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcasting Network. I'm Joe Kent, Executive Vice President for the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, filling in for Kelii Akina. He's the president of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. And um, today we're talking about sharing, and we're talking about sharing homes. What if you wanted to share your home with a visitor and that guest wanted to pay you in return? Well, in Hawaii, and at least in uh, Honolulu, they're, thinking, they're the latest uh, county council to try to make that illegal. And today we're going to talk about all of the, uh, the ideas to make this illegal and whether that's a good idea or a bad idea and how that will affect our economy. Today we're talking with Mary Lavoie. Welcome to the show, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we're talking a little bit about a few bills. Now, Bill 85 would basically ban... Uh, short-term vacation rentals where the owner doesn't live in the home. And Bill 89 would only allow a, a very limited amount, about 1,700 bed and breakfast. So these are bills to basically crack down on the home sharing industry. Is that is that how you see it? It's basically to close down the entire industry for any of the locos to participate in. Mm. It's uh, economic suicide is what I call it. I ate, Bill 85 is very... Um, Restrictive in a sense that nobody can room share, uh, whole home rent, um, and if you do, there's enormous fines connected to it. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to close down a, a platform and an opportunity for local residents to participate in making a little bit of extra money. And uh, Bill 89, what would that do? Bill 89 also is very restrictive. It cracks down on closing all whole home sharing whatsoever and will allow a very small number of um, room sharing. Currently, there's probably 8,000 whole home room sharing that's going on. Sure. There's about 352,000 homes in the Honolulu market, mm -hmm. and they want to possibly only allow a half a percent, which mm. is, would mean most people would not be able to room share um, or whole home rent. It's interesting how some of the language um, involved in the, the creation of this policy is some, some people say, oh, this will allow, you know, this is a path towards legalization or a path towards uh, permitting and, uh, and a path towards letting uh, home sharing happen in the state. But, but actually, if it's only 1,750 uh, homes that are allowed to do this, uh, some people say that's not really allowing it, that's more like banning it. Yeah. They've basically come up with language in the bill to protect just the hotel industry. And um, we, we all know where that money goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they pay the workers. And the rest of the money leaves the island. Well, how much uh, money are we talking about, especially when it comes to uh, vacation rentals, Airbnbs, and all that? You know, how much money does that generate for the economy in Hawaii? Do you know that? Well, or? currently, um, they say that there's it's a 1.2 billion dollar industry annually um, and everybody knows somebody that's either room sharing or vacation renting their house either they, when they go on vacation mm -hmm. or they're spending time away visiting their children going to college or if they're by coastal um, everybody knows somebody that's already doing it and what we were trying to do is get the uh, city council to embrace it in a responsible manner and um, so far, they've come up with uh, regulation, regulation, regulation. And um, they are obviously being paid off by the hotel union and the corporations that came up with all this legislation to ban it in residential districts, R3, R5, R7, R10, sure. so pretty much right. everywhere that's... So it's yeah. an effective ban, and there might be some special interest. Well, there's a lot of interest There's, there's actually here. special interest for medium-density apartment only, so okay. a few selective buildings. I see. And the hotel yeah. industry. Okay. That's it. Okay. They don't want anybody else in their business. And so, uh, other parts of these bills are that, um, you know, we have these huge fines. You know, sometimes it's $1,000 a, a day, sometimes 5000 sometimes 25000 and sometimes $50,000 per day for doing the wrong thing, maybe advertising the wrong way or something when it comes to this. They are trying to scare all the local people mm -hmm. to not advertise on any hosting platforms and that um, they are not allowed to collect 
any income or room sharing or whole home rentals. So when it comes to these huge fines, and there's a lot of components we can talk about this with, just with the huge fines, um, you know, is that constitutional to have these huge fines? It's not constitutional to charge fines that are way out of line mm -hmm. with the violation. Sure. And so there was so much opposition to just the fines alone mm -hmm. that the city council did come down from 25,000, 50,000, 100,000. They reduced it down to, I think, 5,000, 10,000, and 25,000. Sure, you know, they, sure. they did adjust but it's still the fines. Per day. So if, it's you, crazy. if it racks up, then you, have, you might have to pay still it's a horrible. lot of money. It's horrible. And also, another component of these bills, there's a lot to talk about here, mm -hmm. but uh, kind of the last component with the bills is far as I can see it, is the neighbor against neighbor um, aspect, which is that if, let's say I um, am renting my home as a vacation rental, um, my neighbor can take me to court, and if he wins, he or she wins, then um, I have to pay for his attorney fees and all of that. There was so, so much opposition to pity neighbors against neighbors that they also did take that out of the bill. Okay. okay. Um, that's just not a nice neighborly thing to do. Sure. Um, a lot of jurisdictions in other cities are embracing whole home sharing and room sharing and being neighborly that they actually have brochures that they give out uh, the entire city mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, reminding people of being mindful of your neighbors and well, yeah, let's quiet talk about hours that. So and what stuff about, like that. What about um, people who say, oh, well, uh, Airbnb, my neighbor does Airbnb and they're Maybe they're loud at odd times of the night, or there's parking problems, or um, you know, I don't know, garbage problems or anything. They, so. Neighbors and neighborhoods have legitimate complaints and should be regulated. Okay. We are looking for fair regulation because nobody likes a bad neighbor. I don't want a bad neighbor. Um, so we're trying to get them to, instead of throw the whole industry out, with all these huge fines and everything, but to embrace some of the industry and actually regulate the areas that need regulation. For instance, if you're a whole home mm -hmm. rental, they can say something like you have to have parking on the property. That's sure. it, right? Yeah. If um, you break the noise ordinance, which is quiet hours from 10 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning, that neighbor has an opportunity to call the police, just on like a, a alarm. Right. And so you're, basic, you're basically saying that um, if there are issues when it comes to noise, if there's issues when it comes to parking, let's deal with that issue separately. Find them. From the whole yeah. you know, banning it all together. Give them a noise fine. Let's say it's $500. Okay. okay. And if there's a constant noise problem, because you're always going to have a few bad neighbors. Sure. They could be long-term tenants mm -hmm. and be bad neighbors. Sure. So even without a vacation rental yeah. industry, you still might have yeah. a bad neighbor. So, okay. you know, if, if somebody is found to be that inconsiderate bad neighbor, mm -hmm. you give them a fine. 500 for the first time, 1,000 for the second time, 1,500 for the third time. And maybe after that, if they're consistently a bad neighbor, maybe not give them a permit. What about people who say that uh, there's just too many vacation rentals and they're gumming up the whole affordable renting uh, market. So, you know, maybe, there, yeah. There's a little truth to that in okay. a sense that um, there might be taking some of the housing stock, but not very much. When mm -hmm. I say that, most of the people that are home sharing aren't gonna rent out their whole home anyway. A okay. lot of the people that are home sharing are seniors that are trying to pay their medical. They are trying to, you know, have a little extra money to mm -hmm. pay their bills. Sure. Um, Maybe the kids are away at college and they want to have that room open for when their child comes home, the room's open. Or when family's coming to vacation, it's open. And when family's not here, they rent it out. Sure. There was a lot of testimony to seniors that love being hosts, love to spread the Loha spirit, patronize all the restaurants and shops in the neighborhood, and are very good, responsible neighbors. So I don't think you should yeah. penalize everybody. But there still are some people who, um, you know, are, are using spaces that would otherwise be used for rent. And, you know, in that sense, you could say that the, you know, vacation rentals are putting a pressure on rent prices, which I don't know if they're being inflated because of they that. They haven't or... really put a pressure on the rent. If you look mm -hmm. at the rents that are out there right sure. now, historically, they're 
you know, they've steadily climbed up. I mean, you can still get a studio or one bedroom for a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. So I mean, that that really hasn't sure. had an effect on it. If you look on Craigslist right now, you'll see there's at least three thousand vacant long-term rentals. Sure. If you look on the MLS right now, there's another thousand vacant rentals. Mm -hmm. Well, what should policymakers do then if they if they're concerned about this, um, trying to provide more units and more spaces for rent? I mean. Should they ban the whole vacation rental industry, which would, you know, maybe create a bunch of new uh, rentals or, you know, what should no, they I do? No, that won't create a bunch of new rentals mm -hmm. because the people that still room share are still going to be there. Yeah. They don't necessarily want to share that room full time. Well, what about uh, other things? Um, you know, the uh, economic impact, and we talked a little bit about that, but I mean, getting in the weeds here. Um, you know, vacation rentals, they contribute to our economy. And uh, I mean, the, the people who, who visit those rentals, they go on hikes and they go to restaurants and, and so forth. I mean, um, and if they, if we cut off the market here, then presumably that all that uh, economic activity would leave. Is that well, right? Well, look at North Shore. Can mm -hmm. you imagine what's going to happen to the North Shore? You know how many North Shore people have come in to testify to say, what are we going to do with all these single moms mm -hmm. that want to ha do the house cleaning and be able to pick up their child at two o'clock? Sure. They don't have the opportunity to drive into Waikiki and, you know, work a job in town. They're just going to create mm -hmm. more traffic. They need to work right. out where they live. And these jobs provide um, an opportunity for those people to have a better quality of life. They talk about how they fix up their homes. They can pay their mortgage. They can pay their rent. Um, they're even putting some of the homeless people to work, cleaning the yards sure. and doing all kinds of stuff. So it's it's helping some of the economy, but there are people on the North Shore, and I would you know be remiss if if I didn't say that there are some people on the North Shore who don't like vacation rentals mm -hmm. and who want it, you know, just uh, you know ha uh, Hawaii as if as if we had no vacation rentals. So and people say there's too many tourists here and all of that. So how would you respond to that? Well, we are a destination location. We have very little other industries other than small business, the military and tourism. So yeah. we need to embrace this travel trend because these visitors will just clearly go elsewhere. I mean, sure. in the United States, it is a $36 billion industry and growing. Mm -hmm. And this is the way the millenniums want to travel. Mm -hmm. They oh, want yes. options yeah. and mm -hmm. accommodation. And if we don't offer the combinations, uh, accommodations, they'll just clearly go elsewhere. So sure. we either lose the money and uh, destroy the opportunity mm -hmm. for the revenue stream, which the revenue streams um, will afford us the opportunity to pay for that noose around our neck rail. It fixes our streets, mm -hmm. our infrastructure, our sewers, our parks, our beaches, all the sure. erosion that's going on around mm -hmm. the island. But we need that money. And if we yeah. don't collect it from the tourists that are happily willing to pay it and locals that are making money that are willing to share that money if we don't take it from them the honest truth is they're going to have to raise everyone's property taxes sure. substantially well, we're, and we're going to talk about uh, you know taxes as related to vacation rentals when we come back we're here with Mary Lavoie I'm Joe Kent uh, from the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii we'll see you when we come back Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Welcome back uh, to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Um, 
And uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Think Tech for providing us uh, this platform to, you know, and, and many other people, the platform to speak about important issues. And the important issue we're talking about today is vacation rentals, home sharing. Um, should it be banned or not? And how much does it contribute to our economy? We're talking with Mary Lebois. And we ended by talking a bit about the taxes. So obviously, if uh, vacation rentals, home sharing is, are contributing a lot to the economy, then presumably they must be paying a lot of taxes as well. Is that right? Or how's that I work? would say that some people are and some people aren't. Okay. A lot of the uh, people that are renting out their guest cottage or their back room or their whole home when they're gone sure. would like the ability to pay their fair share taxes. Some of them are already paying. Yeah. Um, most, most of the whole home rentals that are managed by companies, brokerage companies, are already paying GE and TA tax. Mm -hmm. and they've been paying that for a while. They also pay the city a much higher tax rate. They pay residential A. Oh, residential A. Which is, used to be $4 for tier one. Mm -hmm. And anything over a million dollars, they were paying nine dollars. That's kind of a, a different tax category, but basically, it's for wealthier um, non uh, non rent um, where they don't live in that property. Is Believe that right? it or not, a lot of local people are paying that double right. taxation, mm -hmm. triple taxation, whatever you want to call it. Sure. And the reason they're paying it is because instead of investing their money in the stock market, there was many, many local people that invested in a second property, or they decided to hold on to a property that they're family left them, mm -hmm. belong to their mom, their dad, they're trying to keep it in the family. If that is the case, they are currently paying this residential aid double, triple taxation. Um, and that has already chased a lot of locals out of the market. Um, when they introduced residential A, I sold off a lot of property for local people and they were just really forced when, to when sell. When the taxes went up on those, uh, that residential A category that we talked about, the yes. million dollar or so homes or, or higher, um, then those houses, a lot of people what, wanted to sell those houses? Yes, or? yes, lots of locos were, they came out of the woodwork and said, we have to sell. If they were paying $3.50 per thousand, let's take 10,000, let's say they were paying 10,000 a year for property taxes. Mm -hmm. Overnight, Reze raised it to $30,000. Wow or greater, mm -hmm. okay? Because they were fluctuating with the values at sure. that point too. And in Hawaii, some people are, are cash poor, but property rich, and those people couldn't pay the tax. Is that what you're saying? So A lot of elderly people that were charging rent to tenants sure. said, I can't raise the rent three times. Mm -hmm. my, my people aren't gonna pay this kind of rent. We, we're already limited on what we can charge our, our okay, tenants. Okay, so we've got uh, taxes on these homes, which is a, kind of a subset of the, uh, uh, vacation rental industry as well, because some of these homes are used for home sharing. Um, so people are supposed to be paying those taxes, the GET, the TAT, but uh, not everyone's paying. But at the state, they um, passed a bill at the legislature, SB 1292, which would basically um, have what the vacation rental company, like Airbnb, for example, hand over the bag of money to the state and that would be about $52 million that the state would get. And, uh, and so the vacation rental uh, operator would pay um, and collect the taxes basically, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. So what's the problem? Well, um, we're waiting to find out whether the governor will sign that on June 24th. Um, it passed by one vote. Uh, the Very rare, by the way, to happen yes. in Hawaii to pass by one vote. Since, yes. Okay. Now, Governor Ige did veto that bill back in 2016 because it was introduced before. A similar bill back yes. in 2000. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And he vetoed it, so it didn't go through. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, I think the state and the city realize we need the money. Why are we not taking the money? We have so many initiatives and financial responsibilities that we are faced with that the only responsible thing for them to do is to take the money and sure. people are willing to pay so right. if they embrace and he approves and signs that bell mm -hmm. he will be able to collect it's the 50, GE it says here 52 million dollars at least in the most they're recent estimating time. between mm -hmm. the 52 million and 65 million annually sure um, mm -hmm. he'll be able to collect it from all the other islands mm -hmm. 
and yeah, but the, the, not Oahu. But then the problem, though, yeah, because if, if Oahu bans it, yeah. then that $52 million or whatever is going to go down. And so it's interesting that lawmakers, um, you know, in, in their zeal to get the tax money, also are overzealous to ban it, in which case they would lose out on the tax money. So, you know, how does this make sense? Okay, so there's two, you know, sides to this story. So the state's collecting the GE and the TAT tax, okay? okay. Effectively, you know, almost 5% on GE and 14% on TAT, TAT okay? Right. So they're collecting a good bulk of money, okay? The city feels short, short change in a way, and they're like, well, we're not getting any of that money. But what sure. they fail to recognize is by registering all the BMBs with a registration fee for a permit, by registering all the TVUs, let's just say they register 7,500 BMBs and 2,500 TVUs, they're going to collect $11 oh, million dollars annually just right there. Just from registrations. Yeah. But, they could charge $1,000 yeah. for BMBs. They could charge $2,000 oh, like an annual for registration, you yeah. I see. Okay. And then, in addition to that, they're failing to recognize all of those people are paying a little higher rate of tax, property tax. Mm -hmm. So if they sure. drop, if you're renting anything short-term, you automatic, automatically fall into res A. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So homes that are under a million dollars, which are a good portion of the homes that people share their room, they need that money. Sure. They would fall into that four dollar and fifty cents range. Right, because they're under a fair. million dollars. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Sure. Then whole home rentals, which make more for mm -hmm. renting a whole home, would fall into the ten dollar and fifty cents category. Taxes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they're collecting all of that too. Mm -hmm. So sure. everybody gets their fair share. Right. The homeowner makes a little bit of money to offset the high cost of home ownership in Honolulu, mm -hmm. and the renter who is paying these high rents, has a little opportunity to make a little bit more if they're not fully utilizing. Sure. There's then, a lot the of problem times. With the, uh, people say the problem with the state bill, though, uh, to collect the taxes is that it doesn't give over the private information of where the homeowner lives and, you know, what kind of Airbnb they're renting. And yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't you know fork what? over that information. The, uh, it, it, it doesn't. But if you have the... Uh, TVU or the B&B, you put their registration number on their ad. Sure. Okay? Right, yeah. Put the registration on their advertising that they are registered. Here's my registration number. Sure. And, okay. and the platform is collecting the tax. That's all they need to know. Sure. You know, but there's are, such are a thing as property it, rights and privacy and, are, you know. Are people putting those numbers on the ads or is that a big problem right now? I mean, I no, be, uh, uh, no, because the, uh, the state hasn't embraced it and nor has the city. I see. We, sure. People are trying to get them to say, you haven't issued a permit since 1989. For God's sake, issue some permits. So there's kind of a culture of fear then around people who are in the sh uh, shared uh, home sharing industry yes. that, okay, you want us to, you know, put our signature on the line, but if I do that, then what? Are you going to attack me for it or what? Um, at the same time, those people are being scapegoated as, oh, they don't, they're not in compliance. They're illegal. They're, they're illegal all illegal. And all that. Well, they make everybody feel like criminals, criminals you know, right, and these right. are you know, property owners and, and people that are just trying to get by. Well, at the end of the day, though, what does this mean for you know, the average person uh, who's trying, struggling to make, uh, make it in Hawaii? It means that the kids will have to forego the extra piano lessons, the extra camping trip, the extra vacation, maybe foregoing private education. I mean, we're all working so hard to give our kids a better life. So the city council is put into place to make our lives a better place to live. They're supposed to take care of our parks, our streets, our sewers, our trash, make Hawaii a better quality of life for us. With these bills, they're harming the economy, they're killing businesses, killing jobs. Mm. I mean, why don't they go after the real problems, well, like what? homelessness sure. and, you know, how about all these homeless people that are roaming the neighborhoods? They're well, ruining the neighborhoods. Well, now, what about um, going back to the economy? And you, you mentioned there's probably what, a $1.2 billion uh, you know, impact mm -hmm. that the home shared market is having. Um, 
if the if they um, basically ban the home sharing industry, then you know what will that do to our economy? I mean, how is the tourism market going right now, and and how would it what would happen? Okay, I think a couple of things are going to probably happen. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of people that would just go underground. Oh, it would, everybody would be a black knows. Market, everybody knows somebody in Hawaii, and they're going to be couch surfing. Um, there might be some. There new, might be a referral. Or something, my sure. my my family friend wants to rent. Blah 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 blah. So there'll be all of that. Okay. okay. So the state and the city stand to lose all of that because people invite people to come and stay at their house all the time. What are you going to stop yeah. them from giving you giving you money? And they're the going to give the people with the money. Black market is that you know black markets are more dangerous normally. I mean. It's hard to trust people in a black market because there's less of a rating system. And, you know, if it's, let's say it's legal and everyone can see it, you've got a five star rating system. So, you know, the host and the guest are, are kind of rating each other and yes. trying to verify their experience. Where if it's a black market, that's all secret and you lose that sort of, I guess, transparency. Security and transparency. Security. Sure. You also just turn away a lot of visitors. Here we are spending, the state's spending billions of dollars on attracting people to come to our state. Mm -hmm. Now we're trying to tell them, you're not welcome. Sure, and Southwest just came here, and uh, if we cut off the uh, vacation rental industry, then maybe there'd be less demand from those uh, people looking for a deal on flights too. So, well, um, I'm sure we could talk a lot more about this issue, and uh, these uh, bills and policies will continue for a little while at least. Um, so we'll see what happens. Thanks so much, uh, Mary, for joining us on the show. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. So, yeah. Thank you. And uh, my name is Joe Kent, and you've been watching Hawaii Together on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Thanks for watching.